Hello all and welcome to our crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on our final four rows of our granny mandala or granny circle if you will. Uh, <laughs> this has been a very trying blanket for me <laughs> and guys I have struggled to get those edges or to stop those edges from being all wobbly. Can you believe it? I've tried so many different ways to stop them. As you can see, I've still got some threads I need to weave in under there. But um, it's, I've got to see if I can try and get it in. Oh, all the way. It's getting a bit dark. Sorry, guys. I'll bring it back down again. <laughs> the blanket, as you can see, is a little bit big now and I can't keep it in frame. But have a look at the border. It's cute. I've done the uh, P-code edge uh, like I've already done once before in another tutorial. Um, actually, I've done two tutorials on a P-code edge. So if you are struggling with this, I will pop links in the description box down below. I will pop a, a special link with um, the uh, thicker yarn and thicker crochet hook so you can really see that P-code stitch uh, being performed. Okay. Now, what can I say about the Granny Mandala? It has taken a lot out of me. I think I'm tired. <laughs> time to uh, wash and block this piece when we get a chance and I have done some uh, blocking in the past on granny squares so if you really want to block without me you can go right ahead um, and there's no big deal but I will be back to do uh, this blocking on this piece what can I say guys um, except thank you for joining me on this, this is part four of our uh, granny mandala and for my regulars, yay, <laughs> it's going to be finished today. It's definitely going to be finished today. And um, for the newbies, if you would like to do this blanket, I will put all of the, actually, I'll put the playlist in the description box down below. Click on the playlist and the playlist will take you to all of the um, um, parts of the series and will also take you to uh, some of the stitches you may need for the actual piece so I'm not going to talk anymore let's just get down to business and let's start making our border all right here is our granny mandala and as you can see I can't fit it in the uh, screen right now you will need a your a crochet hook 4.5 or whatever hook you used to crochet your granny mandala oh, you all need your scissors yes you will and yes I hate to have to admit this since we are doing a stash busting granny circle, you will need your whoops, <laughs> sewing or darning weaving needle, whatever you like to call it. Go and get your next colour. My very next colour after the blue is orange. Okay, so we'll grab our little orange right now. And you can start anywhere you like. It doesn't matter for this row. And that is the benefit of this row. It does not matter where you start. Okay, pop your hook in any space you like. This is a very basic row, guys. Very, very basic row. Let's go. Chaining up one, two, and three. Okay, let's just make some space there. We're going to do a double crochet in the same space. Chain one and two. And another double crochet in that space and yet again another double crochet okay then we well we'll first we'll put that at the back we're going to weave that in later so don't go don't go cutting it it does need to be weaved in as well now we chain one and then we jump straight into that next space and we put two double crochets chain two two double crochets chain one and two and two double crochets simple so far yes it is and i will try to stay in frame i promise <laughs> and then before you jump into the next space you chain one and then you do two 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 one two two chains one and two and then you do two double crochets and then you chain one and then you jump into the next space and do two 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 
one and two and two in there so I'm going to show you what you've done and then you're going to go away and repeat this pattern until you get around the other side whoa too far away here we go all right so all you've done is put two two chain two one chain two 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 one two 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 one one sorry <laughs> two two all right that's all you're going to do now what you're going to do you're going to chain one whoa you're going to chain one jump into the space and put two double crochets two chains two double crochets chain one jump into here two double crochets chain two two double crochets chain one jump into the next and that is all you're going to do all the way across until you get to this side right here right there and wait for me there Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row we have chained one there oh it might be too far away sorry guys we are going to put our one just my <laughs> blanket is falling or blanket whatever you want to call it at the moment two chain one and two and one and two now we chain one ordinarily to jump into that next space but what we are going to do is just find the top of that third chain right there if yours is not as tight as mine it shouldn't be hard to slip stitch through all right pull that through now pull up a loop we're going to cut this color it's up to you if you want to keep yours i'm going to cut mine i'm going to pull the loop through and there you go i don't know how much i can fit in here at the moment let's see okay all right is a slight bubble hopefully it's nothing we can't handle <laughs> all right guys a very slight bubble if yours has bubbled too much let's get a nice close-up of one of the sides move that out the way nice close-up oh that's not the way to go that's the way all right that's not too bad really okay so there's that row now we are going to do the second row and i believe i used a zip purple okay here we go let's get rid of our orange we don't need that anymore we probably won't need it for the rest of this series isn't that exciting all right the next part is start in a space where you've got your two double crochets you chain two and two double crochets now this border is a little bit different to the one i showed you in our previous tutorial so uh bear with me i'm testing it out myself actually <laughs> how do you like that i'm doing another one of those wing it things guys you know when you wing it you sort of guess and hope for the best <laughs> that's what i'm doing pull a loop through guys let me bring that out a bit so you can see what i'm doing just pass your yarn over like so okay Alrighty, we are going to chain up three. One, two, and three. Then we are going to double crochet in the same space. Then we're going to double crochet in the same space again. So at this stage, it looks like those chain threes is, is classified as one double crochet. So at this stage, it looks like you've got three double crochets in that large chain space. Now in the smaller chain space, you're only going to put two double crochets okay and that's in that chain one space that we have one and two and in the larger space we're putting three double crochets okay in the smaller space we're putting two double crochets pretty cool huh and then we are doing three in our big space whoops just lost my thread there one two and three and two in our next all right oh don't lose a stitch like i just did all right so what we're going to do i'm gonna stop right there oh gosh all i have to do is one more stitch there you go all right so basically all you are doing for this row is oh too far sorry guys three in the big space two in the small three in the big two in the small three two 
three, two, three, two, three, all the way around until you get to there. Stop and I will meet you up. Here we are at the end of this row. And, uh, you know, these rows are taking <laughs> so much longer to, to complete, aren't they, guys? <laughs> All right. So um, I've put two double crochets in a space before the, the um, set. So now I'm going to put three double crochets in that very last set. Two and three. Then I'll put two double crochets in the space before our ending row and two and now ordinarily you would jump into that space there and put three double crochets but they're already in there so all we're doing here guys is slip stitching into the top of that chain pull the loop through pull it through there make a loop pull it up and grab your scissors and there you go pull that little thread through you may notice that it can bubble just a slight Okay, when I say bubble, you look at the edges. I can't get it all into the camera, guys. I've tried. It lifts a little bit in certain places. It's going to do that. It's not going to be perfectly flat. And that's okay. So what I'll do is towards the end of the tutorial, I will eventually do a washing and blocking to help pin that down and straighten it out for you guys, all right? Hopefully you've got a, <laughs> a mat or something big enough for us to pin it down to or even a few towels if you have some towels at home but don't worry about that for now we are going to focus on our next row which i believe i used the pink and i've got a pink here somewhere okay next row is going to be fun guys and it's going to be very very basic all right you know what i'm going to do don't you i'm going to add, add a nice little fancy row for that last one it's coming guys be patient <laughs> all right here we go now, best thing again, you can put your um, hook in any stitch you come to, okay? It can go into, not the space, we're going into the stitches now. So I'm going to get you a nice close-up so you can see. Okay, so not the actual space there, the stitch, the little V stitch. See that gap right there? It can be in there, it can be in there. Okay, any stitch you see. Now I find it easier to see that stitch right there. So I'm going to pop it in there. You can pop it anywhere. As long as it's not in the space, it's in the stitch. Oh, this is all we're going to do. Wrap your little thread around your hook. We'll bring it out a little bit so you can see. Pull the loop through. Pop your yarn over to lock it all into place. Chain up three. One, two and three. And you're going to leave that and you're just going to put a double crochet in that stitch right there going over the pink yarn just once and what you're doing is you're just locking that pink yarn in place and then you pop it at the back you're going to weave that in later but not now we're not going to worry about it for now all right so pop that thread right at the back so you're not it's not bothering you and you're going to put a double crochet in the next stitch one Double crochet in, guess what, the next stitch and the very next stitch and the next. And guess what, guys, you are going to put a double crochet in every stitch in the round. How's that, guys? Very basic borders so far, those three rows. I'm hoping you have enough yarn for all this. So let's have a look and I'll show you what you're doing. That is all you are doing. You are putting a double crochet in every space. Now, the border so far is actually similar to the old one. The only difference is I've made the three and then the two and then the three and then the two. The old one was three, 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 three all the way through. And in between here, you had two chains as well. I thought by closing it up. Oh, sorry, guys. I thought by closing it up, it may tighten it up a little bit and stop the wave. It has a little bit. There's still a little bit of a wave, but it's not that bad. And we are going to wash and block our blanket to make it nice and straight in the end anyway. Well, not straight, round. <laughs> but you know what I mean, flat. <laughs> All right, go ahead and complete this row, a double crochet in every stitch. And I shall meet you up right at the very beginning. Okay. 
Alrighty, here we are at the end of our row. We are going to put our last double crochet in our last stitch right there. And we already have our chains there, so what we need to do is slip stitch. Oh, this is too far away. Sorry, guys. Is slip stitch at the very top of that chain right there. A little bit tight on my end. Sorry, guys. As per usual, there you go, slip stitch through there and in there. Okay, so now we're going to chain one. And yes, you guessed it, we're going to cut it. Okay, now, guess what guys, you're going to be very, very impressed. Because we are now officially on the final row. Yay! <laughs> now, ordinarily, after the pink, I use the white. But I want to finish the blanket off with a blue. If you want to use your next colour, that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use the blue because I like the blue. It's not for anything. I just like the blue. Look at your work, okay? See where you see those double cluster sets down there and then the rest are single, single, single. What you're going to do is start on right above one of those no you're not you're going to start just before one of those cluster sets so we're going to pico on top of those double cluster sets which means just start one no that's two stitches there start about two stitches one two before it and that will help us so you don't have to you can put your picos anywhere but i'm finding that because it bubbles out a bit it kind of bought the whole thing out a little bit anyway so why not put your picots on those little bubbled ends just um, pop a, a loop over your hook and pull the loop through like we've been doing all along place your um, tail end in front just for a moment until we crochet over a little bit it's not close enough let's try again so for this part you are just going to chain one two and we are going to double crochet over our thread as well, our blue as well, okay? Just to hold it down, one and two. So we will do one more stitch, double crochet that is, and then we'll do our pico. Now, if you're not sure how to do a pico, I do have a tutorial here on YouTube. I will pop that in a description box down below. For those of you who are avid crocheters, you can continue with me. If you are new, go and check out that um, tutorial. Have a bit of a practice and come back to us. You are chaining up one, two, and three. Then you are going into the very last stitch there, half of it, and the very first stitch, half of it. Pull the loop through, hold it up there, and pull it through there okay so it's really quite basic it looks fiddly but when you see it enlarged in the larger stitch with the larger yarn and the larger hook it will be a lot easier for you so now we're just going to put a double crochet in there and your next and your next and then i'm going to explain what we can do here all right now what i did before um before i got on before i turned the camera on I did a um, your, your little pico edge there and then I did double crochets all the way across to the very next double cluster set you see here. Now I didn't like the pico, I didn't think they were nice enough. I wanted a pico right in the middle as well. So what I did was from there to there roughly I counted how many double crochets I had across. And I roughly had around 30. So I figured, why not do another pico halfway through? Okay, so if I had 30, all I need to do is count 15, do another pico, and then get to that very next spot there and do another pico. I'm hoping this makes sense. You may have more across depending on, I'll bring that out again, depending on how many rows you did. I didn't do a lot of rows. In fact, I don't think I did many rows at all. I think I did nothing, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was supposed to make it bigger, but I just ran out of time. So I left it this size, which I'm going to use on the table um, underneath, you know, 
on the coffee table that is underneath a bowl of something so i'm not really worried um but yours might you might have 50 across here so halfway through 25 put another pico edge you might even want to put quarter the way through quarter quarter like four pico edges there just think in between your cluster sets your double cluster sets that's where we're putting our picos depending on how many more you want to put in i'm only going to put one more in so i'm going to count 15 up across and put another one in so we've got one two three again it depends on your count all right four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen now before i do the peacoat edge i'm going to count back to make sure i've got the 14 so that's where i'm going to do my pico no i'm going to do the pico there so I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's where the pico edge is going to be. So we do one more double crochet. Bring that out. In, out. <laughs> one more double crochet there. And then we're going to do a pico edge. 1, 2, and 3. 1, All right, so we're going in the front there. And there, that one's very basic, it wasn't so tight. Pull that through, pull it through there, and then we're going to do a normal double crochet in the very next stitch, and so on, and etc. Okay, I'm hoping, guys, that your uh, journey into your crochet is as exciting as mine. Or mine has been actually <laughs> i've been crocheting for a very long time now um so what i'm thinking is if you are a newbie and you want to learn more stick around don't forget to um subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to click on the uh, little bell button so you can receive further tutorials in your inbox if you are a regular thank you again for joining me <laughs> And if you are someone who is always, always talking to me and always, always sharing and having fun and visiting my Facebook page and Instagram and everything else, welcome again. We've just finished our, um, our 2000 subscriber competition and the lovely Renee Harvey from the USA has won. So I'm going to have to do a very big shipping. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she won the prize and apparently she's never won anything before so there you have it um, I will be doing many spot prizes they're not as big as the last one we had um, but I will be doing many spot prizes and I will also be doing our um, 2500 mark and then our 3000 mark and things like that so stick around for uh, more competitions and more giveaways to come now we have done our Row of double crochets, pick it, row of double crochets, right above the double cluster set is where we're going to put another picket. I said picket, didn't I? I meant pico. I know, I've always called it picket, but I've been <laughs> corrected the odd time, so I know it's pico. I'm just, you know, looking at it the way it's written, that's all. <laughs> all right, so do your pico <laughs> right now. Chain one, two, and three grab your hook pass it through the top there and to the side on that one right there that one's a little bit tight this time and I messed it up just be careful you're only putting it through one thread not all that other stuff at the back okay just be wary of that one on the front and then one at the back but not all those other threads at the back I'm hoping that makes sense and then you do your normal double crochet in your next space and again in your next and again in your next hold it there pull up a loop we're going to have a quick look and then you're going to run off on your own and do the rest yourself 
I think putting the pico in the middle made it look even better. You don't have to. You can just do the pico there and the pico there and every above every double cluster set that you see there. Or you could do a pico at every fourth stitch or every sixth stitch. Whatever pleases you, it is a, a very pretty border and it doesn't matter how you want it done. Okay? So what I want you to do, I'll continue in this manner all the way across until you get to there and I shall meet you up and we are going to finish off. Okie dokie, here we are at the end of the row. We are going to put a double crochet in that very last stitch we come to. Right there. Now remember the chains we had there, we are going to, let's separate that a little bit. Now, let me show you nice and closely so you can see. That double crochet right there, the top there belongs to it. So you need to put your hook into the chain right beside it in a nice tight stitching. <laughs> Hopefully yours isn't as tight as mine. Pull the loop through. Pull the loop through again, pull up a loop, don't cut it yet, I will cut it because I'm happy with it the way it is. So I'm going to cut mine, if you don't want to cut yours yet and you want to sort something out with me, then leave it open. Okay, so if you are happy with everything and all your stitches are correct, you can cut your thread like I just did and then weave in some ends. And we are going to weave in two ends. Now the first one is that very first bottom part that we started off with which we um, uh, crocheted over a little bit just because you crochet over it doesn't mean it's right to go and no 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 you need to literally weave in these ends really really well because this is the end anyway so and by when I say weaving in you are splitting the yarn remember to check your work first make sure there's no mistakes because once you do this, it's, it's not going to be very easy to come undone. And you are going to rip and do all sorts of weird things to it to get it undone. So there you go. So you go one way. Then you go back another. Again, splitting the yarn at the back, by the way. We're not crocheting in the front. I'm sorry. We're not <laughs> weaving the ends in the front. When you look at the front, those little Vs there are facing you. And when you're looking at the back, the Vs are pointing that way. Okay. I say that in almost all my tutorials, or most of them anyway, um, because a lot of people don't know the difference between them. The, but the, the bonus is there are times when you don't need to worry about the front and the back, especially when you are crocheting one way, then turning it and coming back, because it doesn't matter which way you look at it. So just find one way and work on it. Okay. This is getting really thick now, so I'm going to stop there. I am going to cut that thread. Like so, just be careful not to cut your your into your work. Now, this very, very top thread is the one that a lot of people worry about. And I, I get that. There's nowhere for you to go, is there? Well, this is true. However, we have a picot edge here. So we can actually work our thread into our picot edge if we want to. You don't have to. You could if you want to just weave it in along up and down the sides there or bring it down the back there and then weave it across there I'm going to go into our pico edge I want to I want to try it I've never done it before and I'm going to try it so what you do is you just split some of the yarn not all of it just some of it grab your thread through like that I've got a really long thread haven't I guys <laughs> let's make it shorter for a bit there Okay, come back into the other stitch, right there, splitting that yarn. Okay, pop that there. Now we're at the picot edge. Okay, turn it over towards the back and play in and out of the picot stitch that you've done earlier. The back of it so it's not affecting the front at all don't pull this too tight or your pico will no longer look like a pico it'll kind of look like a big knot in fact i'm thinking of avoiding the top of the pico and just coming back down into this stitch here to be honest with you i really don't want to damage our pico i want to keep it nice 
See, it's already looking a bit pulley. And I, you know, pulley, if that's a word, tight <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm making my own words up here. Let's make our own dictionary. We'll call it the crochet dictionary, hey? What about that? <laughs> so go up there, splitting the yarn again. Now go back down the other way, splitting the yarn again. Any way you like, as long as you are happy. Remember, don't overdo it or it'll go thick like mine's already <laughs> starting to go thick. I'm going to come back down the other way and then I am going to cut my thread. A very large piece of thread here. <laughs> I didn't really need such a big thread, did I? Okay. Oh, it was, oh, it was, there it is. Okay, so it is a little bit noticeable. I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to be washing and blocking and keeping it all straight in the future anyway. Guys, you have just completed part four of our Granny Mandela blanket. A little bit bubbly, a little bit wobbly. It's okay. We're going to pin it down and wash it and pin it down and make it nice and flat. And also, don't forget, you need to also weave in these other ends that you have here. These will be a lot easier for you to weave in because you've got somewhere for them to go. I don't know what else to say, guys, except thank you so much for joining me for this particular mandala. It, it's, it's taken a lot out of me. <laughs> this is one um, blanket that I really, really had to focus with. I think um, designing it this way um, was a bit of a struggle, but I'm going to work on a future design of a mandala, maybe not so much with the granny stitch, but of a mandala itself, and we will probably... Um, try something different in the future. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for uh, the mandala. Don't forget to weave in your 100 gazillion ends at the back there. And remember, guys, you, you can use your little bits of threads, leftover threads, to make something like this. I can't fit it all in the screen. <laughs> but I took a nice little footage in the uh, promo for you to have a look at. Um, but there you go. You have completed your mandala. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, hit the little bell button so you can receive further tutorials. And there's nothing else to say except ciao for now. <laughs> Bye.